again, everyone. It's now official. The McGrath era in AMA National Motocross has begun. I'm Bob Varsha. Art Ekman is standing by with the dramatic story of a season-ending Honda sweep. We'll begin with the 250s. Now, when the season opened at Gainesville, Florida back in March, Jeremy McGrath went to great lengths to express his commitment to winning a first national title to go with what has become a streak of three straight 250 Supercross crowns. Last weekend, seven months and an equal number of overall wins later, that goal was achieved. And he clinched the championship in a style that only befits a man who calls himself Showtime, Art. I'd say so, Bob. He set the Steel City track on fire, going 1-1. That meant that he ended the season with five straight moto wins. I've covered Jeremy from the moment he burst on the scene, and in my mind, this title is the direct result of Jeremy's efforts to paint a new self-portrait. Not just a brash supercross rider with a bundle of talent, but now a mature competitor looking to be the best ever. And last weekend, it was vintage McGrath. Moto One saw John Dowd, Mike Kudrowski, Phil Lawrence, Larry Ward, and James Dobb out early with Jeremy, but no Jeff Emig. Number six got a late start, then got caught up in a massive crash in turn two. And he slim hopes of a title slipping away. Emig would get going again in 18th after the first lap, battling back to a sixth place finish. Meanwhile, Jeremy McGrath was taking the lead quickly and running away to a four-and-a-half second advantage in the opening lap. Dobb, number 16, has had some outstanding moments this season, but they've been few and far between. Here, he moves by Dowd into second. This would be the best battle of the race, lasting some nine minutes. Dowd finally recapturing second place to stay. Within the first five laps, McGrath was pulling a double-digit lead. Larry Ward on his way to fifth and his best overall showing of the season. McGrath, the Checkers, and the 1995 title. Outdoor Nationals takes a lot of, a lot of time testing, and the bikes, they got to be prepared every week, over and over again. And, and uh, you know, it's just a complete team that takes a whole effort. I finally put my mind to it, and I think it just helped everyone else work so much harder. The second 250 moto was like a walkout fight in boxing. McGrath already securing the 250 title, lamps in the 125s in exciting fashion, and Jeremy gets the whole shot. Emig, looking for redemption, battling for pride's sake. He went outside. Jeremy goes inside. The early dice for third before dropping back was between series part-timer Doug Dubach, number 28, and privateer Pennsylvania native son Mike Jones, number 62. McGrath was nowhere to be seen by the rest of the field. A 15-second lead by the halfway mark. The only question to be settled was for third behind Emig. John Dowd, number 14, and Larry Ward, number 11. The sometimes side-by-side -side battle was settled when Dowd made the pass for third to capture a second place overall. McGrath, Emig, Dowd, Ward, and Kudrowski, the top five in the year's final moto. McGrath's 11th win in 24 motos. Here's how they ended up in the championship points race. McGrath by 60 points over Emig, Kudrowski in third, then Dowd, Kyle Lewis in fifth, Ward, LaRocco, Lawrence, Dowd, and Albertine rounding out the top ten. Great stuff. Now, Art, Jeremy's title had to be the headline after the first moto, but there was some other news floating around the paddock as well. That's right. Mike Kudrowski had a very fine first moto, placed third, even with a sore knee. But there was a lot of rumors flying around about the possibility of Mike retiring. He surprised me by telling us. Mike Kudrowski was one of this sport's most accomplished outdoor national competitors. Classy and accommodating to the fans off the track. On the track, Kudrowski was one of only two riders in motocross history to win the Triple Crown. Jeff Ward the other. Three Daytona Supercross wins. Another highlight of his outstanding career. I think I will be retiring and um, I'll be con doing some consulting work for Kawasaki and stuff and, you know, helping out the other riders coming up. I didn't want to announce I was retiring. I didn't want a farewell, farewell uh, tour thing and all that. And I just wanted to quit and get out of it. And, you know, I'll see the fans around. Typical Kudrowski, no fanfare, just a simple confirmation that one of the greatest careers in motocross is now coming to an end. It sounds like Kawasaki could use Kudrowski's help next year, though, considering that both he and Mike LaRocco are now off the Green Factory 250s. And especially with the youngsters coming on to Team Kawasaki, his talent certainly can be used. We plan on getting Kudrowski into our Motor World studio soon to talk about his illustrious career, of course, and his future. You bet we do. Now, how about the 125 highlights? Ready to go? Oh, exciting. You bet your life, Bob. I barely believed what I saw, and I was at the track. Well, let's let the folks sit on the edge of their seats for a moment while we check the 250 motocross action overseas on this week's 1-800-COLLECT Honda scoreboard. 
Stefan Everts of Belgium came into the season's last round in France, locked in a points battle with countryman Marnique Bervots. Everts proceeded to go a brutal 15-3 and for 8th place overall, so he lost the title, right? Wrong. Bervots fell out of the first moto. Everts is the 95 world champion by 43 points over American Talon Volan, whose two 7 finishes netted him second overall in the finale. Ahead on Moto World, the struggle for the 125 National Motocross title ends in the last corner of the last moto. Welcome back to Moto World. Art, we thought the 125 National Motocross title fight would go right down to the last event, but not like this. What an incredible season. Seven different moto winners, five riders took turns leading the points, not to mention Steve Lampson's late season charge from nowhere to the points lead. Well, then came last weekend. Lampson and Ryan Hughes toe-to-toe -to -toe for the championship, and it went right down to the last corner. The day at Steel City started with Lampson leading Hughes by just three points. Huffman, 16 points back in third, would jump the gate and have to come from 18th, eliminating him from any title chance. Number 43, Kevin Windham, coming off his finest finish the week before, took the early lead away from hole shooter Michael Craig. Lampson, number five, moving quickly into second, past number 708, Ryan Huffman. And number nine, Hughes, jockeyed his way into third, all by the second lap around the Steel City track. Adding an interesting twist to the points battle, Wyndham was building a bit of a lead. Lampson was looking a little tense. Ryan Hughes, knowing he was down three points, was letting it all hang out. Lap three, Hughes got by Lampson for second. A finish in this order, and they'd go to the final race with Lampson still up by one point. Just three minutes later, though, Hughes would move into the lead. A Hughes first place and Lampson third place would give Hughes a two-point advantage going into the final moto. Lampson wasn't going to let that happen, though. After a terrific duel with Wyndham, he finally got by for second place. Lampson made his move a little late and was hoping Hughes riding on the edge would lose it. But he didn't. Hughes, the checkers, picks up the three points, tying Lampson in the season's championship race. This race is all or nothing, you know. I said, if I ain't gonna win, I'm gonna crash, so. I rode as hard as I could. Those guys rode good, but had a little some good lines out there and tried keeping uh, the pace going and worked out really good. So it's like starting the season all over now. Yeah, it's one moto race right here. It's tied points, so so it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Hughes, Lampson, Wyndham, Pichon, and Craig, the top five in Moto One. Lampson came out in Moto Two, a much different rider. The whole shot and a lead the Honda rider would never relinquish. Mike Brown, number 26, diced along with Lammy and then had his hands full with Hughes. Hughes into second place. Brown would finish in third. Mikhail Pichon would secure a fourth place in the moto, good enough for a third place overall. Lampson was magnificent in keeping his pace up. Hughes, overjumping, pushing his bike as far as it would go, couldn't bite into Lammy's four to five second lead. Number 12, Damon Huffman takes on the day's top privateer, Scott Sheik, and passes for fourth. Sheik, the day's $500 winner, Chad Pedersen, won the Camel Skull $5,000 check as the year's top 125 rider. Up front, Hughes was moving toward desperation. Then, what made the most dramatic finish to a 125 season the most emotional? Lampson, the checkers, and his first title ever. Hughes's chain broke, and the finish line was uphill. Ryan had worked too hard for this day. He wasn't going to cheat himself. Hughes, to a tremendous ovation, pushed his bike across the finish line, collapsing with exhaustion and the weight of losing the 125 championship. Lampson, Brown, Hughes, Pichon, Huffman, the top five, had them all up, and here's how the season ended. Lampson by five points over Hughes. Huffman, Brown, and Pichon make the top five, with Raynard, Ferry, Pedersen, Sheik, and Stevenson rounding out the top ten. From Steel City, Ryan and Lammy are headed for Europe as teammates at the Motocross de Nations. Ryan will straddle a 500, while Lammy's going to be on a 125, and these guys are already looking ahead to next season. Lampson signed a new contract with Honda late Sunday night after clinching the crowd, and Hughes, he's going to be a 250 rider with Team Kawasaki, Bob. What a finish. Thanks, Art.